What's up guys, Iggy here with Faltech Unlimited and today's video we're doing an Inside the Waistband uh, Springfield with an Olight in Storm Gray. So I got the uh, Storm Gray here, 12 by 12 nominal cut and I uh, already got the mold propped up with the gun. It's the XDS 3.3 uh, .3 Mod 2. Uh, this particular one's 45 but cool thing with Springfield is that the 9, 40, and 45 are all the same frame. So um, without further ado, Let's build it. Oh, let's get ready to rumble. All right. I'm going to go ahead and throw our tape on. All right, now let's find a set of perfect. That's gonna fit it. Now I just gotta find the other one. There you go. All right. We'll go this way. Oh, where are my other ones actually? Nope, too small. All right. Now the reason why. So I could either go this way, cover the whole thing, or I could go this way, and our retention point is gonna be. Uh, right here in combination with that side. So I could actually I could do both. It'll make it look cleaner on this side actually. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, I don't want to line it up directly with the light. I like to go slightly below it. Reason being on the foam press. It just seems to work better when you're down a little bit further. And just to throw it out there. It is currently midnight on Sunday. Yeah, and this is what I'm trying to do to get orders out. All right, and we'll go on to this side. That's good, that'll give me good right there. We'll throw in a little piece. That should be perfect. This is a right-handed inside the waistband storm gray with dual rubber loops. I actually like the rubber loops. Um, they they seem to form, or they they they're very nice. And they're actually getting a lot more popular than than everything else, as far as uh, foamies go. There we go. Okay, and the um, actually the blocking I'm going to be using for that is in the press already, but I also have this one here, so I can use that one too. Now we have to cover that, so we'll just go right there. See where my trigger guard is? It's right there. So this is gonna go right here. There's nothing on this side, so I don't have to worry about blocking it. The only, <coughs> excuse me. The only thing I have to do is worry about worry about that. So that's right there. I want to go up a little bit. There. Throw that down because otherwise it moves. All right, now we're doing, um, like I said, rubber loop, so we don't have to worry about this piece right here. But this is going to have uh, the claw on it. So before we cut, I will go ahead and get that claw. And I can tell you, I have 
yet to build this combination of gun and light for a holster before. Um, so I know I'm going to have to cut my retention plate, which is no big deal. All right, so there's that. Um, and one more little tiny, tiny thing. So the indent that is right here that is going to be uh, pressed in by the press is going to be ridiculous. So what that means is we're going to have to put something in there that's thin and that's cut to shape. So what I normally do is I get this thin stuff. So this is all circuit boards. I, I get this stuff from my old work. I just go in and take it. So just line it up and that's where I'm going to cut. And that is thin enough where you'll still get retention. And voila. So that's going to go right there. And there's going to be a little piece of tape. that in place for a minute so we can get this one on. All right, and that'll be perfect for the indent that we will need right there for the retention. So now the only thing left is, in fact, the retention plate. So I'll grab the uh, stuff to do that, get these ready. And if you couldn't hear it in the background, my heat press is all warmed up. It's uh, it's hot, and the foam is underneath it. <sighs> Retention plate. I'm tired. It's been a long weekend. All right. On, heated, everything, yada, yada, yada. Storm gray, grain side down. If you do it the other way, the grain will become shiny, and it's just, you lost material. Uh, Teflon sheet, same thing as always. Go ahead and clamp. Hard to hold it and blow it at the same time. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. Here we go. 150 seconds and then we're up. It's in the press. Apparently I'm tired. It's in there, it's fine. But I wasted material, let me tell you how. I didn't cut it. Now what I usually do is I take the mold with the retention plate and I cut it just outside the retention plate or at the end of it. And I save that sliver because I make a lot of stuff with the cutoffs and the slivers and the leftovers and everything. I didn't do it. So now I just lost this piece of Kydex. No big deal. But generally with scraps that it's just going to get thrown out, I could potentially sell them for 50 bucks or more with like my magnetic holsters or anything else or even uh, mag carriers for sidecars. So I, I have a pile. And I mean a pile of scraps and cutoffs. But oh well. But here it is again. Four pieces of foam, two on the top, two on the bottom. That is absolutely squished. And this thing is a beast. I mean, it's so squished, it's bending. So, uh, while well, that's in the press, uh, I am going to complete this Glock 43 build that I'm doing in carbon fiber. And if you notice, look at the foamy. See how high it is? That is requested to be that high because the customer wanted deep conceal. Now, let me tell you my thoughts on this. Let me let me hang you up. Tell me what is the point when your belt line is above the grip, so you have to dig in your pants to get a full purchase on the firearm. I don't see it. So, while that's in the press, I'm going to go ahead, mark this out, drill it, cut this, possibly finish it, and then by the time this is done, that'll be cool enough to get out. Do it all over again and then i'm gonna go in for a snack because it's like 11 15 or 12 15. i'm gonna go in for a snack and then maybe i don't know we'll see well other than the massive waste of kydex it actually came out pretty good but since i showed you the glock 43 i was building here it is all said and done minus the lasering i still have to do on it but you can see just how high that actually goes so yeah whatever it's what the customer wanted so it's what the customer gets and um but yeah hmm. waste of material but oh well oh yeah well but it looks good 
it press came out really good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just do what we do. And the press out of the decks. And we're gonna go ahead and line it up. And then draw a shape, cut it out, finish it up, and then go inside and go to bed. All right, uh, so I believe this one is clawed. Yep, it's clawed. So um, what I need to do is grab a claw, and it pretty much gets lined up how it would, and then I'll mark that. And, you know, as a uh, Kydex bender, if you guys are doing this, shape the holster any which way that your heart desires. Okay, and then we'll cut right there. So, when I'm doing these, do that and I'll slide it just slightly. So we'll rock that. Technically we don't need to drill a third hole because these are whoop, whoop, are able to go, but I'm gonna drill that hole anyway. So this gentleman has that option. Always clean your hole. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. You guys seen all that? So, for, you know, it's gonna look like this. Yeah, here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and set all this in so i actually changed up my hardware just slightly i still do three quarter inch but instead of doing these pan heads i'm doing these flat ones so i like the look a lot better when it's on just those um so you see me do the uh swap that out in some videos but anyway these are uh eighth inch oh, eighth inch uh pass throughs i'm gonna throw that guy on there I just want to point out that Storm Gray is a beautiful, beautiful color. these guys and I'll show you how I do these. You want button facing up and I generally set these for 1.75. So take your screw and everything you need and throw it through. When you buy these from knife kits, they're in a set, so you don't have to worry about piecing things together. All right, so I did that. Then I take just a little bit of locker. There we go. Throw that in there. Find the hole. And then I just keep it straight. And then repeat. And as you can see, again, why I spaced it out just a little bit. And check that, that one's good. And we're good. Awesome. So here is a inside the waistband right-handed in storm gray with the rubber tactical IWB loops, the claw, and that is for the XDS 3.3 
Mod 2. Oh, that's nice. I like it a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode on, well, how to make a holster for the XDS. Uh, it came out phenomenal. I think it feels great. It's going to be sent off to a Mr. Uh, John Paul here. This is going right to you in uh, Ava. Oh, uh, ooh, where is it? Well, we're going to Florida today or tomorrow rather. But anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. All the material, everything used in this video was purchased from holstersmith.com or knifekits.com. They're both affiliated with each other. So huge thank you to Steve Andrews and the crew out there for supporting me and as I support them. And um, stay tuned for the next one, which is coming tomorrow. Okay, see you later. Love you. Bye.